What's going on TW fans? Thomas here bringing you this edition to Tackle Warehouse's how-to series aimed at making us more knowledgeable anglers both on and off the water. Today we're going to be going over how to set up the float and fly rig. The float and fly rig is a super popular technique that actually originated back east. Started with fixed bobbers, fixed leader links, it has since evolved and expanded and spread west. So now we have the slip bobber and more of a variable leader length on there. Highly productive, great for clear water fisheries or highly pressured fisheries, and just something you definitely want to know and have in your arsenal. So we're going to jump right in and go over how to set this rig up. The first step is actually going to be determining your leader length. This can be a little bit difficult to do on camera, so I'll just kind of explain to what you're, what you're going to be looking for. You can either A, rely upon your electronics, you know, just visually identifying where those fish are holding. B, if you, it's a local fishery or a fishery you know very well and you happen to know, hey, this time of year the fish tend to be holding at this depth, well then you're off to a good start there. If you're going in totally blind, not a problem. A quick and easy way to do it is you can either go by just your arm length, you can pull out the leader length as far as your arms, or the length of your rod, somewhere in that five to eight foot length. So it's just an easy place to start and you can always adjust your leader length from there. So for step two, we're actually gonna start setting up the rig now that we have our leader length determined. I have a very short leader length as you can see here and I'm also using braided line. Now traditionally you're gonna use a really lightweight, you know, four to six pound fluorocarbon line, but for visual purposes on this video, I have this light braid and a short leader. The first uh, portion of setting up the rig here is tying on our bobber stop knot. You can actually tie these up yourself with some nylon string, you know, some upholstery thread or anything like that, or Phil sells these handy pre-tied ones. So you just take your tag end here and you're gonna slide it through the tube and we're gonna go up to the top of where our leader length is. So if you wanna go to seven foot, if you wanna go to eight foot, if you wanna go to three foot like I have here, you know, you're gonna slide this knot up that far because that's what's gonna actually stop your bobber. All right, so to get this knot off of the tube and onto your line, you're just gonna simply pull it off, work it off here, being careful to pull it up away from the straw tube so you can slide the straw tube down and off at the end of your tag line. Now from here, we're gonna simply tighten this knot. Just slowly pull it in, keep it nice and neat. There you go, we have that knot tightened. Now it's important to get this knot really, really tight. You want this thing to hold up for the whole day of fishing. So what I'll actually do on the water is I'll use a couple pairs of needle nose pliers and really cinch it down with those pliers. From here, we just need to simply cut our tag ends off. And you actually wanna make sure to leave a little bit of some tag end, because like I mentioned, this knot is naturally gonna slip. It's just gonna happen while you're fishing. So it's gonna slip, kinda come loose in a little bit. So you leave a tiny bit of a tag end so that you can re-grab with your needle nose pliers and cinch it down again throughout your day of fishing. So there you go, you can see small tag in there, you don't wanna to go too big on that tag end, cause then it's gonna get hung up in your spool, hung up in your guides, definitely what you don't want. All right, the next step here, we're gonna add our bead. Now this bead is gonna serve a couple of purposes. One, it's gonna protect that knot that we just cinched down on our main line that stops the bobber. And as well, it's also going to stop the bobber from slipping over the knot in the unlikely event. Some of these knots, you know, once you do get it down really tight, they're gonna be pretty small and the bobber can actually slip over that knot. So that bead protecting the knot as well as keeping the bobber from slipping over it. Speaking of the bobber, it is time to tie our slip or thread our slip bobber on. Now this part's very important to this rig. This is kind of where I was talking about that evolution earlier. Rather than having a fixed bobber, we have a slip bobber that's gonna be free sliding up and down your rig. I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here momentarily. So you just keep feeding your line through, pull it out through the tag end here, and there you go. So you can see your bobber can't go past that point. However, if we just tip it down, it can slide down. So you can reel that knot up into your spool and you can have you know, a three foot leader all the way up to a 30 foot leader and beyond. So if those fish are holding really, really deep in winter, you don't need to have a long fixed leader that you can't cast. You can reel that knot right up in your spool and this bobber is just gonna slide around, no problem at all. Now, when it, it's also gonna help as well with casting. So these finesse jigs that we're using, right here I'm using one from Spro. These finesse jigs are really, really lightweight. I mean, we're talking down to a 16th of an ounce, sometimes even less. They even make some 30 seconds of an ounce there. So with that sliding bobber, it'll actually slide all the way down to the jig and add some weight. So you're gonna be able to cast it pretty far with just your standard seven foot spinning rod or whatever you're using. 
So we're gonna tie on our finesse jig at this point. For here, I'm just using a Palomar knot. It's simple, it's quick, it's easy. And we have a bunch of videos on tacklewarehouse.com on our learning center about all these knots, clinch knots, San Diego jam, Palomar. All right, so Palomar knot's tied. Got our jig fixed on here. Let's trim our tag end. And there we go. We have the float and fly rig. Now, as I mentioned here, you see how the bobber slides all the way down. That's gonna add some weight, allow you to cast this thing really, really far, and then it can free swing right back up. All right, that's gonna wrap up this how-to on setting up the float and fly rig. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you learned something today, make sure to give us that like. And if you wanna see more videos just like this one, head on over to the Learning Center on TackleWarehouse.com. And don't forget, we wanna hear from you guys. This content is being created for anglers at every level of the sport, from beginner to expert. So if you wanna learn a simple knot or some more complex trick or hack, anything like that, make sure to let us know. Well, until the next time, you guys, keep your lines tight and your float and fly rigs ready.